Okay, I want you to think about three phrases that Jesus gave his disciples. Now, they have just seen him create this miraculous thing of feeding 5,000 men with five loaves and two fish. And then what he does is he sends them out, his disciples out, onto the Sea of Galilee. And he is going to go up into the mountain to pray. It's in the dark of night. It is about 6 p.m. He sends them out. And now it is almost 3 a.m. in the morning. And they are battling on the sea. And they are rough. They're going through rough waters right now. And Jesus is now seeing them as he's praying for them. And he says these three phrases, three, three things. Number one, take heart. Second, it is I. Third, do not be afraid. All right, let's think about each one of those phrases. Take heart. What does it mean to take heart? It means to be encouraged. And and so many people are feeling discouraged today. And what he's saying, I want you to take heart. I want you to be strong. I want you to be courageous. I want you to know that you do not have to give way into this despair or this dismay. You can trust, but you can trust him because that leads to the second thing. Take heart. It is I. How big is your God? Uh, It was Ed Welsh who wrote a book called When People Are Big, God Is Small. But you can actually change that title and say that when circumstances are big, God is small. When your health is big, God is small. When your job is big, God is small. And so what, what Jesus is saying is this. I want you to take heart because it is I. And who is he? He's the second person of the Trinity. He is seated at his father's right hand. He is the one who is the king of kings and the Lord of lords. He went to the cross for you. He went to a grave for you. He rose victoriously for you. He ascended on high for you. And he is at his father's right hand for you today. That is who he is. You can take heart because it is I. And therefore, do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. And, and Jesus said this to them as he is walking on the water. And I want you to think about this. It, it caught me with this idea of the fact that Jesus is walking on the very waves that are causing them all the, the pain and the problems. And they're, they're making headway in Mark chapter 6 very painfully. They're, they're battling these waves. They're battling this wind. And Jesus, in his sovereignty, walks on those waters, walks on those waves. He is causing the winds to cease in their lives. And he's saying, take heart. It is I. Do not be afraid. So so what is the winds and the waves and what's the storm that's in your life right now? I believe that scripture is teaching us that we need to make Christ big and that's how we can take heart and that is how we can deal with the fears in our lives. So what is the storms? I want you to think of them as under the feet of God. Maybe it's your physical health. It's under the feet of God. Maybe it's your financial health. It's under the feet of God. Maybe it's family relationships. It's under the feet of God. Every trial, every trouble, every stuff, suffering, every pain, every loss, every tear is under the feet of God. What would happen if we got a vision of Christ? as being above those things, greater than those things, and taking us above and to a greater place. I've been also meditating on Psalm 23 this week, and it talks about the fact that God is our shepherd. We are not in want. He he makes us lie down in green pastures. He leads us by quiet and still waters. He restores our soul. He leads us in paths of righteousness for his namesake. And even though we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, we don't have to fear evil, for he is with us. His rod and his staff, they comfort us. He's he's preparing a banquet feast before us. I guess similarly to how he created that banquet feast for those 5,000 men with five fish and five, five loaves and two fish, a feast in front of us preparing a table before us in the presence of our enemies. He's anointing our head with oil. His cup is overflowing. Surely goodness and mercy will follow us all the days of our lives. And we will dwell in the house of the Lord. For how long? Forever. So take courage. It is I. Do not be afraid. Blessings.